When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of earth the separated and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the cause which impelled them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that these among that among these, these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. Laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall see most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transistent causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for the future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let's fa let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people re relinquish the right of representation in legislature, a right inestimable to them for, and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them in compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers, incapable of annihilation, have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed all the dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states, for that purpose obstructing the law of naturalization for foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of a new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their office and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and pen hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has affected to render the military independent and of and superior to civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and acknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts 
of pretended legislation. For quartering large bodies of armed troops and arms. For protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murder which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. For cutting off our trade with all parts of the world. For imposing taxes on us without our consent. For depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury. For transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretended offenses. For abolishing the free system of English laws in our neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries, so as to render it at once an example and a fit instrument of for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. For suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroys and destroys the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny, already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens, taking captive on the high seas, to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fell themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrection amongst us, and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we petition for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeat, repeated petitions have been answered only in the <coughs> injured. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be a ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislator to extend their unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our integration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. And we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must therefore acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation, hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies of war and peace, friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these United States are and of right ought to be free and independent states. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown. And that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce. And to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, 